In this video, I talk about whether you're playing on the right gaming surface and what your options are. So when you first start out in tabletop wargaming, more often than not, you play on a bare table and you use just stuff you find around the house for terrain. I don't know how many different people I know, and I know I started this way, used, you know, basically just a flat table and maybe some pop cans and some books for hills and, you know, different kind of obstacles. And that's how it kind of starts out. As you move on, though, if you're anything like me, you go to the craft store or the fabric store and you buy yourself some green felt. And that's your new green grasses upon which you will fight. Um, if you want to get fancy, you might buy gray felt. If you're doing a kind of an industrial sort of sci-fi thing, you might do brown felt. If you want to get real fancy, you buy a color of felt and then maybe you, you spray paint it a little bit to kind of give it sort of a mottled look. And, and you can get as fancy with it as you like. But as you move forward with your hobby, you generally want to find something a little bit better than that. Now, there's awesome stuff that you can do with materials like kind of pink insulation foam, that stuff you put outside your house. You could make a cool board with um, indentations in it, and you could build up hills, and you can do, you know, gravel and make like a little dry riverbed and post-apocalyptic, you know, whatever, all that stuff. And it's super cool, but it does take a lot of work. Building a really good terrain piece for your stuff to, to play on, for your guys to, you know, roam around on, that takes a decent amount of work um, to make it look really good. And also, it's not super portable. If you build like a 3x3, three three, you might be able to fit that in your car if you got like a hatchback. If you build yourself like a 4x4 four four size, that gets even worse. You can, and I've seen people do this, for like a 4x6, they actually build three 4x2s. And when you stack them up, they make 4x6. And if you do it just right, you can make it so that they can be swapped different ways. And there's all kinds of different answers to it. Different ways to, to skin that particular problem. You know, I don't want to say skin that cat. I like cats. Um, but the trick is, is that they're not just that portable and, like I said, a lot of work. So what are your other options? Over the last 10 years, there has been this sort of explosion in gaming mats. So gaming mats are a pre-printed uh, mat that you lay down that is pretty much, for the most part, two-dimensional. I mean, technically it has a thickness, but you know what I'm talking about. There's not hills and bumps and stuff like that built into it. They may be printed on there, but it's not, you know, they're not real. They're imaginary. So, but they still look cool. There are as many different types of printed gaming mats as there are well, I was going to say something stupid like there are grains of sand, but there's not. There's, I mean, but there's a lot of them. If, anything that you're looking for, if you're looking for industrial uh, blasted wasteland, you know, green, lovely, you know, verdant field, you know, whatever you want to fight on, you can probably find a company that makes a printed mat that you can use in 4x6, 4x4, 3x3. Those are the three main big different types. 4x6 is generally for big games, big army type games, Kings of War, Games Workshop stuff, you know, whatever, that kind of jazz. But if you want to play a smaller skirmish game, Malifaux or, um, uh, you know, Privateer Presses, uh, kind of like, you know, War Machine or Hordes or any of those games, they generally are played on a 4x4 square or even a 3x3 square, you know. So you can get those things, um, get printed mats, and then not only are they a big time saver for you because you didn't have to create it, you just had to buy it. They also are really, really portable. You can roll them up. They Most of them come with a carrying case, sometimes even with a neat shoulder strap. And then you can just take that stuff with you. So if you're, you know, if you're gaming at home, you can build yourself a cool piece of terrain because you're not taking it around too frequently. But if you sometimes game at your friend's house, gaming mats can be a really good idea. Now, there are two main types of printed gaming mats. There are the uh, neoprene gaming mats. Neoprene is uh, basically think like a mouse pad. If you've ever used a mouse pad before that's got that kind of rubbery, spongy stuff with the cloth on top, that's neoprene, and that's the type of mats that 
are you know they're thinner than uh, your normal mouse pad. Most mouse pads are pretty thick, maybe as thick as I don't know three eighths of an inch. These are generally thinner, and they're normally printed just one side. But you're starting to see some companies that are producing the mats where they're printed on both sides, so you could have a different thing on each side. You know, but if you want the regular side kind where they're printed on just one side, then you get a nice, real grippy bottom part that will hold onto the table and they won't slide around. So that also works out pretty well. There are a lot of benefits to the neoprene, the, the rubber printed mats like that. You've got, besides the fact that, you know, every color in the rainbow and you can print them to look like whatever you want, you know, the, the manufacturers can. Um, they're also generally pretty water resistant. They're generally pretty wrinkle resistant. And um, they're also, because they're kind of thick and they're kind of rubbery, they, um, they're real quiet with the dice. When you roll, you know, when you're an orc player and you throw 40 dice and you have to roll them three or four more times because of all of those attacks, they're a lot quieter. So they, I mean, there's a little bit of bounce, which might help with randomness in your dice rolls. I'm no scientist. I don't know. But, uh, it, you know, it, it's, it at least doesn't sound so jarring. I have a, a Games Workshop um, Realm of Battle Board. If you want to get talk about three-dimensional, you know, hard plastic... Uh, modular battle boards and it looks amazing but when you roll a whole cup full of dice on it it is loud because it is hollow on the inside and so it's really loud these game mats besides being water resistant pretty stain resistant i wouldn't spill red wine on them you know but they're pretty stain resistant um portable all that stuff they're also quiet make dice rolling quiet which is also really kind of nice um these mats here are from frontline gaming and uh, I really like the quality of their mats. And they have another feature that I also really like. And that is that they print their mats themselves. They do them in America. Um, a lot of companies order them from China. And so they get a bunch of different designs and they get shipped in. And then if they run out of a design, they have to reorder from China to get more in. The thing that's cool about Frontline is they bought the machine. They bought one of the machines. And they print those mats pretty much on demand. So... There should almost never be a situation in which you'd be like, oh, that mat's out of print or it's, uh, they don't have any in stock right now. Because if you order it, they'll go, okay, cool. And they'll go look on the shelf. And if they don't have one, they'll just go print one and then ship it to you. So I think that's a kind of a cool feature. Um, they also uh, relatively recently it, have stopped putting their logo on the, on the mat anywhere in the corner or anything like that. So you don't have that kind of distracting logo, which is also sort of a nice thing. I like frontline mats. They're rubber neoprene mats. There's a great selection, different sizes, and they're just some of my favorites. So, you know, take that as, it, as, as, as you will. But there's a different kind of mat, which is relatively new on the market. It's, it fills a different niche. Um, and I didn't really know much about them until about a year ago, maybe a little bit more. And those are vinyl mats. So these are printed on a, a color vinyl, almost like a like a vinyl banner that you would get, you know, to hang up outside of a business. They don't have the grommets in the corners and they're not, you know, hemmed around the edges and all that kind of stuff. And they're printed at a higher, generally a higher uh, dots per inch. It's a much finer print than what you would generally see on one of those other types of, uh, you know, banners outside of a business saying, you know, you know, going out of business or, or whatever. But they're really nice. Um, there's not a lot of companies that seem to be doing it right now. Right now, there's a company, uh, uh, Mats by Mars. I've known Mars for a number of years, actually through YouTube and stuff. He started this company, I don't know, two, three years ago, making these really nice um, mats, originally aiming a lot towards Malifaux and Guild Ball. If you've played either of those games at Adepticon you know, tournaments in the last couple of years, you've probably played on Mats by Mars. And they're a really interesting material. They're not nearly as thick as the neoprene mats. Uh, so they so when you roll on them, they're a little bit louder than a neoprene mat, but still not very loud. Um, but they're also, they're, they're very thin, so they're a little bit less expensive. Um, they don't have that grippy bottom as much to grab onto the table as easily, but they do work pretty well. They're super, super resistant to wrinkling. If you were to, let's say, you know, take this uh, mat and um, maybe you moved from one apartment to another and during the move uh, it got stuck under a box and that box sat on it for, I don't know, let's say six months. Just, you know, throwing out a number here. And you take that mat, it's going to have kind of a crease in it, but you just take a um, hairdryer to it and it will uh, straighten back out. You know, you might have to hang it on something, but you can... There, it's very resilient stuff, which is very interesting. If it gets a crease in it, pretty much a hairdryer will take it right out. Also, you can write on it with 
not dry erase markers. Dry erase markers will actually stick to it from what I've been told, but wet erase markers, the kind where you need a little piece of paper towel with some water on it. So you can draw on the mats and, and make notations. They're great for, let's say, role-playing games where the DM needs to show, okay, there's a trap door here or you know whatever is going on. Again, lots and lots of different designs, different types of options. Again, quite portable, comes in different sizes. Really, you know, you're, you're kind of spoiled for choice. So if you're looking for a playing surface that you can take places, you don't have to spend a lot of time constructing yourself and going through all that stuff. Um, maybe it gives you benefit of being able to draw on it. Maybe it gives you benefit of being, you know, something real sturdy that sits in one spot and also kind of quiets down those dice rolls. You've got a lot of different options, whether you go neoprene or vinyl. These types of things can, in pretty quick order, really completely change the way that your table looks. If you spend a whole bunch of time building a big 3D cool terrain board and you keep it at home because it doesn't fit in your car and you only play ever on that, eventually you're going to get kind of bored with it. With these different types of mats, you can swap out, throw a different mat down, and play a diff completely different type of game. You could hop from a sci-fi game to a fantasy game to a steampunk game to whatever really quickly. So... If you're interested, take a look. Down in the description, I've got Frontline and Mats by Mars because I know both of them. I like their product, and I thought you guys might want to check it out as well. So uh, give them a look and uh, think about maybe trying to uh, upgrade your gaming surface.